Hi, Alex Kais here, artist and realtor. And this is Green Lake. Green Lake's the place to visit if you want to experience one of Seattle's best urban park settings. It's part of the city's grand Olmsted plan to create a series of interconnected green spaces across the city. And if you're not a fan of urban architecture as much as I am, this is the same Olmsted, well, his sons, that designed Central Park. Here's a fun fact. Seattle has one of the best preserved Olmsted Park systems in the nation. My all-time favorite thing about living in Seattle is all this water. There are a ton of lakes around town and even a little bit of the ocean. I'm pretty sure this is why we're in a bit of a housing shortage though, because the city is just surrounded by water on both sides. But look at that lake. I think it's worth it. Here's another fun fact. This is a glacier lake dug out about 50,000 years ago, but since then there's been a little man-made intervention. In its natural state, the lake is prone to algae blooms, thus the name Green Lake. And about 100 years ago, the lake was dredged and lowered about seven feet in order to create the park land that we have here today. I haven't exercised most of the winter, so I'm walking around the lake today. Uh, city parks only recently opened back up, but for safety's sake, you should keep it moving and avoid picnicking and playing sports and gathering in groups. It's 2.8 miles around the lake, and the walk always goes by really fast with all the great people watching. I've seen monthly corgi walks here, costumed runs, and plenty of old school rollerbladers. Homes around the lake are great. There's plenty of townhouses going up, if that's your thing, lots of condos on one side of the lake, and multi-million dollar views if you can afford it. I'd like to take you into some, but restrictions are a little tight and I don't want to endanger anybody's health. So here's a townhouse that I visited a couple months ago. The busy side of the lake has seen a lot of infill recently, and it's full of townhouses just like this one. This one's sold in the high 700s. It's pretty compact, but it comes with parking, a rooftop deck, and it's right near all the shops. This is a pretty car-free or car light place to live because of all the businesses nearby and because it's so close to transit. There's a lot of condos in the heart of it and here's one that I visited over the winter. There's a lot of condos available in the four to five hundred thousand range and they're all fairly comparable. This is a great one. It's got a really nice living space. It's one bedroom and it's in a really nice building. Okay, we're almost done with our walk, and I wanted to round things out by taking you somewhere to eat. But I can't decide between my two favorite places along Aurora, so let's do both. Paul Constant says it best in The Stranger's Review of Bongos. Bongos serves delicious Caribbean food with zero pretensions, and the restaurant, tucked into a triangular plot of land on Aurora, just off of Green Lake, is practically a theme park ride. It's a repurposed 76 station made into a Caribbean playground, with the help of a splash of colorful paint and a thorough reimagining of the space. Right around the corner is El Naranjo, a taco truck parked permanently at his shell station. Do I just have a thing for gas stations? Let's see if they can make a burrito by the time I pump my gas. I suppose that test doesn't prove anything. But the burrito is excellent. Now, if you're thinking about making a home in Seattle, or you just want a good recommendation for a walk, send me a message. Bye.